Magandang Huwebes sa inyong lahat. Ngayon ay November 26, 2020. 29 days na lang Pasko na. This is Benji Chidoro. Please read our reminders and disclaimers. But before anything else, I'm so happy today because the episode yesterday reached 60 views, the highest since I started this channel last August. I just want to thank all of you for supporting my channel. Maraming salamat po. And the subscribers to my channel had reached 51. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtitiwala. And just like to thank also the latest subscribers, Clemente, Archie Magno, Jerry Magda. Uh, the others I couldn't see, probably because your privacy settings uh, of your privacy settings in YouTube. And special thanks po kay Miss JT. She was instrumental in encouraging me to proceed with this channel. She shared the software she uses, some tips on how to start. She is also my first subscriber. She has a YouTube channel in the stock market and does the daily stock market insights. And uh, she acknowledges me whenever I contribute bits uh, of information. And from time to time, she comments on how I am doing on, on my channel. Sa- salamat, Miss JD. Please support and subscribe to her channel. And also, your comments are important to me. So I encourage you to comment on the topics you want discussed, how I can improve and serve you better, and how I do the report. My background actually is regulatory compliance, but I have special interest on investing and personal finance. I also review and analyze Philippine stocks, so if you want your stocks analyzed using technical analysis, just uh, place your stock on the comment box and I will do my best to review your stock. By the way, I'm preparing a special episode on black sales in relation to the Philippine setting and uh, just doing some finishing touches. So, let's start. Our news is on Philippine Airlines restructuring at SMPH 7th Mall in Mindanao. All of these are the results of trading in today's episode of The Stock Market Today. From the Manila Standard, PAL to implement financial restructuring to stop losses. Philippine Airlines said Wednesday that it is set to implement another financial restructuring to protect the flag carrier from further bleeding amid COVID-19 pandemic. The airline, which exited from court-administered corporate rehab in 2017, did not provide further details. We will make the necessary disclosures at the proper time once its details are finalized. PAL in 1998 suspended paying 2.7 billion in debt to creditors after entering into corporate rehab in 2017. The SEC approved the early exit of PAL from corporate rehabilitation. So, this is um, news to uh, improve PAL's financials because um, the airline industry is, has been suffering losses. Even Sabu Pacific and uh, airlines in the U.S. are not immune to the pandemic. Next, we have... From the business world, CLED SM Prime expands footprint in Mindanao. SM Prime Holdings is opening a new mall in Sambuanga City, where the coronavirus-related lockdown has been more relaxed since mid-August. In a statement on Wednesday, the CLED property developer said it is opening SM City Mint Pro at the end of the week, its first mall in Sambuanga City, the seventh mall in Mindanao. The building will have nearly 38,000 square meters of cross floor area, where more than 90% of the space lease has already been awarded to tenants. So that's good news. SM Prime is opening amidst this crisis. In fact, the first SM mall, which opened, in, that's SM North, opened in 1980. 1980 ba? or 1986? 1986, nag-open ang SM mall. And it was amid the financial and economic turmoil. Diba? 1986 was the Edsa Revolution. But before that, nagbuka si SM. Sa SM North, 1985 or 1986, I cannot recall anymore. Pero it was magulo, magulo ang Philippines noon. Economically, we were down. And then I was still working with a foreign bank then. And lahat nung ating debts, foreign debts, nakamoratorium siya. We couldn't pay our debts. And the foreign institution wouldn't accept our money because yung credit natin, eh, kumbaga zero credit tayo in Philippines natin because of the economic situation that we're in. At buti na lang, nagkaroon ng Edsa Revolution. Anyway, 
this is amid the pandemic and yun nga yung mga kasabihan ng mga Chinese whenever there is um, doon sila nagbubukas and there is opportunity okay they already have seven malls in Mindanao and I think I saw them here yung mga seven malls na yun while reading through kanina anyway hindi ko na makita yung list of malls nila no okay so let's now go to the PSE and how the PSE is faring today the PSEI declined again today 73.76 points or 1.05 percent that's 69.27.75 so na break na yung 7000 level and that's the psychological level if i were to plot the resistance it's here mga 67000 level tingnan niyo to mga kaibigan meron pong gap dito eh. that gap will have to be filled kaya yung next resistance level is 6700 and it may test that level. And you notice, that long sunod sunod the red candlestick po yan. And the RSI has been dropping since um, Monday when it had a um, short body candlestick here. So from 80, nag drop na siya to the 60 level. Our indicators is still under the candlestick, but uh, if it continues its downward trend, mag magbabago po ito. Kasi right now, yung tatlong sunod sunod na red candlestick, ang ibig sabihin po dyan is that there is a trend that is being established which is a downward trend. As you can see with the, with the RSI. Yung DMI naman, tingnan natin yung DMI. It's still bullish but I am not very confident because of these three candlesticks here. So let's just observe tomorrow what will happen. Siya nga pala, tomorrow is a Friday. Normally, Fridays are not very good days in the PSE. In a normal day, this is a profit-taking day. So, maaring mag-retest uh, ng 7,600 level itong PSEI. Observe lang natin, baka bukas mangyari ito. And in so doing, that fills the gap here. And I think the 6,700 level is a strong level. So, observe lang natin tomorrow. If we'll take a look at the summary, 69 companies advanced. 148 declined while 46 remained unchanged. And there was net foreign selling, 2.29 billion. For the market indices, the broader all share index also experienced a decline of 1.1%, while all the sectors registered a drop. And the drop was led by mining at 2.78%, followed by the services at 1.96%. Let's now take a look at the most active stocks. Okay, so let's review BPI, BDO, SMPH, Ali, MBT, Merrimart, SM, ICT, ASEN, and RLC. I'll re be reviewing 10 stocks. And if you have a stock in mind that you want reviewed, please place the, that stock in the comment box and I will be reviewing it for you. Okay, so let's now start with BPI. BPI. Look at that. There is a doji. Actually, it ended flat. Opened at 88. Closed at 88. Kaya ganito. 0.50 dito. The comparison here is the previous day's close. Which was um, 87.5. Kaya 0.5. Green ito eh. Samantalang ito, halos hindi mo makita yung candlestick. Net foreign buying pa rin si BPI. So sa akin, uncertain candlestick itong doji na ito. So, it may either go up or down. And uh, taking a look at the at our indicators, the exponential moving average 20 days is still under the candlestick. The medium and the long term also is still under the candlestick. Nakikita natin yung it's just touching the resistance level. Tingnan natin yung resistance. Pinakamalapit kasi is actually resistance na nato eh. I would say 90 yung pinakamalapit. The nearest support is uh, nandito naman. Nasa 84, 85 ang nearest support niya. So, how do I see the stock? Tingin ko just probably moving sideways. Kasi very resilient ang, ang financial stocks. Like uh, BPI and BDO. And then, uh, foreign institutions are very bullish about the stock. Pero, let's see. Yung RSI, kung titignan natin yung RSI, may, may, may meron siyang bearish divergence. So, ibig sabihin nito, maaaring in the next few days, maaaring bumaba yung stock ng BPI based dito sa RSI. Kasi hindi natin makita kagad dito sa candlestick or dito sa EMA20. 
nakikita natin to sa RSI. RSI kasi is a leading indicator. Whereas the moving averages is a lagging indicator. Ibig sabihin, mga a few days late siya bago na, natin makita yung trend. Pero yung RSI, leading indicator siya. Meaning, maaari mo ma-foresee kung anong mangyayari sa isang stock kung ba akyat o ba, ba, ba based on how you analyze the RSI. And here, since yung peaks niya here and here, this one is lower than the peak here, then I think that what will happen in the next few days is that the BPI price may go down. Next, let's take a look at BDO. BDO had a hanging man, so two successive candlesticks siya, which is a confirmation that there is a bearish trend forming. Like what I've said yesterday, the nearest support is at meron dito sa 104 or 103. 103 to 104 is the nearest support. And if if the price further goes down, 100 yung next. Pero this is a confirmation that there is a bearish trend ahead. Observe natin tomorrow, kung nag-bounce siya sa 104, then well and good. Pero kung meron siyang engulfing candlestick, meron siyang engulfing candlestick na sabi natin na pagkadun siya. Hindi ka madraw. <laughs> anyway, so kung meron siyang engulfing candlestick, then maaaring maritest niya yung next resistance sa 100. Okay, next, let's take a look at SMPH. The index had been bullish for several days, but if you'll take a look, yun yung um, ang composition ng index is R30 stocks. Na masasabi nating yung pinaka matatag na kumpanya sa, sa Philippines, no? SMPH. Okay, this is a fourth candlestick, and right now it touches the MA20, and it stopped there. And sana nag stop na lang siya dyan, no? Pero tingnan natin, nagda-dive kasi yung RSI, and it, it has been diving since. November 20. So, kung titignan natin, dito pa lang, masasabi natin na from here at this point, from this point to this point, masasabi na natin na merong bearish divergence ang stock. Even if the candlestick appears to be solid, like here, dito natin nalalaman kung magkakaroon ng trend na pata pataas o pababa. So, like here, for example, who would have known na ito ay tutuloy-tuloy pataas? Dito. Yan, no? So, ito. So, dito pa lang, pwede na natin sabihin na pataas yung, yung stock. At, totoo nga, tuloy-tuloy until, until this point here na masasabi natin na, or at this point, na masasabi natin na merong bearish divergence ang RSI. Kaya na, RSI is a leading indicator. Nasaan yung nearest resistance ngayon ni SM? It may test the, it may test the 35 level. Kung nagkaroon ng bounce, well and good. Pero kung yung pressure niya ay tumuloy-tuloy sa baba, then meron na tayong bearish movement on the, on the stock price. Next, let's take a look at Ali. Okay, Ali had a green candlestick. Ended at 38. And uh, it tested the resistance, uh, sorry, it tested the support here. The support dito. Resistance ko ba ang sa, resistance main term ko nung kay SMPH and BDO. I meant support. Okay? So, it tested the support here and it bounced. Now, there are three successive candlesticks here na pula. And this one somewhat negated no, the, the downward trend and it bounced here at this line. So, let's see tomorrow. If there is another green candlestick, here, then maaring nagko-consolidate lamang yung stock. In the meantime, yung nearest resistance level, which is, by the way, the resistance level or the resistance is the upper level or the upper price where there are more sellers than buyers. The support is the area wherein there are more buyers than sellers. So, it may test the, this is the resistance level at 4020. The level of uh, the resistance is uh, at uh, 350, 356, 3756. So, maaring mag-move lamang dyan on that level unless magkaroon ka ng red candlestick na tuluyang bumaba na yung presyo niya. Okay, next is MBT. Three successive candlesticks MBT. And uh, it doesn't look good for the stock because 
it appears to be well the the movement of the candlestick appears to be bearish let's start dito with this candlestick here of the hanging man another short candlestick and another short candlestick here if you'll notice pababa yung rsi so it may test the nearest support here i th i don't think it is a good sign observe na tayo don't buy yet kung ma-reach niyo yung point na ito at magkaroon ng bounce then dun tayo mag-buy kasi sa ating mga traders trend is our friend and you have to establish a trend first before you can say that in order to know or to predict where the direction of the price is moving. So, ito, pababa siya. Pero hindi pa nagmamanifest siya sa EMA 20, yung mga indicators natin, because lagging indicator na ito. Lag. Merong lag, kumbaga. It may retest the 45 peso level. Sa akin, observe muna tayo dito. Okay, next, let's go to Mary Mart. Mary Mart had another red candlestick. So, highly traded to kanina. I was observing the stock kanina. What can I say about this stock? It's a... Um, medyo mataas na kasi yung level nito eh. Pero, ang tinetest niya kasi yung resistance or support rather, is this area. So, tinetest niya itong support nito. So, 550 yung level of support niya. And, observe lang natin si Mary Mart. Because this is a shorter candle, so it's possible that when it reaches this level, magkaroon siya ng bounce. Pero, that remains to be seen. Kailangan kasi para masabi natin na hindi siya pababa or yung, yung level niya ay mag, uh, magbago ng direction is a green candlestick. But if you see another red candlestick, then I would say that uh, in all probability that the trend is going down. In the meantime, the nearest resistance is 550. And also, observe, no? net foreign selling yung mga foreign institutions dito sa Mary Mart. So, observe muna tayo. Next, SM. Okay, SM. Okay, we have a hammer. So, there were two successive red candlestick, and now we have a green candlestick with a wick, which means that at one point during the trading day, the price reached a low of 992, and the buyers overcome, overcame the sellers and pushed the prices up to where it is now, at 1,025. This may be a sign of reversal, but before we say that the trend had reversed, we have to see a, another green candlestick the following day. So observe lang natin, kinabukasan, kasi it appears to be rejecting or when it touches the EMA20, tumataas siya, yung moving average nito. Na -re rejection dito. And the nearest resistance, I would say the EMA20 is the nearest, the nearest support rather. The nearest support niya is 1,008. So, pag na-touch niya yan, nagbabound na, na siya. Kung makita natin, another green candlestick, ibig sabihin, pataas na siya. Or, or kung ma maaring mag-consolidate lamang si SM if we see another candlestick. Depende kasi, if it is an engulfing green candlestick with volume, then we may say that there is a possible trend reversal. Pero if it is a candlestick with just average or below average volume, then, ang masasabi ko dyan is baka nagko-consolidate lang si SM. So, our nearest support is the MA20 at 1008 and yung nearest resistance niya I would say is yung pinaka recent high niya dito is uh, 1070 I would think that that would be the nearest resist resistance okay next let's take a look at ICT ICT naku meron siyang gap down ha? so ano po yung gap down ang gap down kasi is when when the closing price safe of the previous day is, um, say, uh, 121.80, nag-open siya lower than 121.80. Nag-open siya at 119. And which leaves a gap here. And it closed at a lower level at 116. So, meron siyang gap. Yan po yung gap down. Ito naman, masasabi natin, kung merong gap up, is the opposite. Meron ba tayong example dito? Pwede. Ito. Uh, an example is here. Yan yung gap up. So, yung pressure niya the previous day is here, pero nag-open siya ng mataas, which leaves a gap. Now, normally, yung gap na, na ito ay na-feel yan sometime in the future. So, hindi lang natin alam kung kailan, pero na-feel up yan. So, what happened to international container? So, bearish yung sentiment niya. And if you see, the RSI is 38 or 39, ano? which is below the 50 level. So, it appears to be moving downwards. It may retest the 
next support level at this 113 114 level 113 ang nearest support niya so ire-retest niya pero it's just probably market sentiment wala naman siyang negative news eh. in fact good news na itong si ICT dahil maganda yung financials niya right now yung mga presyo sa PSEI it's probably a good time to buy pero Observe lang natin. Uh, kailangan bibili tayo sa support level. So, kung na-reach na yung support level ay based on your judgment, then it would be time to buy because at this level, prices may be at a bargain. Next, let's take a look at ASEN. Okay, ASEN. Reverse hammer siya. So, it's a red candlestick. Then, there's a green candlestick. So, hindi... Tumuloy yung, kasi ang sabi ko kahapon, if you see a red candlestick, so maring nagbago yung trend. Pero this time, you see a green candlestick, which is probably a sign of reversal or a sign that the stock may be consolidating. So, ito yung nearest support ni ASEN based on available data. Ito yung nearest support, 5.8 yung nearest support niya. And it would be perfect, no? If it reached the 580 level, mas makabili tayo dyan. So, magandang timing po yan. And after that, lumakas yung stock. Naku, napakagandang timing. And observe lang natin tomorrow on what will happen to the stock kasi maaaring nagko-consolidate na itong si ASEM because a stock cannot go on in an upward trend forever. Sabi nga sa Ecclesiastes, di ba? There is a time for every season under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to move up and a time to move down. And a time to consolidate. Next, Let's take a look at RLC. By the way, kung meron kayong stocks in mind that you wanted to have reviewed, then bigyan nyo lang ako ng ano, heads up. Mag-comment po kayo dyan. Or if you want to you wanted to make a comment, I will acknowledge your comment. So, RLC. RLC, naku, red engulfing candlestick. So, there was a uh, reverse. Anong tawag dito sa uh, sign na yan? It's a shooting star. Ang sabi ko nga yesterday, a, a, there is a sign of reversal, a sign that the trend is reversing if there is a red candlestick. And this is the confirmation candlestick, that there is a sign of reversal. So, itatest niya yung nearest support. Ano yung nearest support niya? I think it's here. 16. 16.20. Kasi merong resistance dito na naging support. At merong support dito. Kaya kung masabing 16.20 yung nearest support level niya. Now, most probably, meron uling red candlestick unless market sentiment reverses. I think it's just market sentiment and hopefully, nagko-consolidate lang itong CRLC. Kasi, not, hindi naman forever eh, bumababa yung stock. Hindi naman forever na umakit, di ba? So, that's it. That's our stock market report for the day. November 26, 2020. Ito po si Benjin Chodoro. Nagpapasalamat po sa inyo, sa inyong pagtangkilik, sa inyong pagtitiwala sa akin. Sana po ay huwag po kayong magsawa. I appreciate ko po yung mga comments ninyo. Yung mga comments po ninyo, binabasa ko po. There is merit on your comment and I will acknowledge you. Or kahit shoutout man lang, gagawin ko po yan. Okay po, marami pong salamat. Ito po ang aking paalala, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik. And see you again in our next episode.